Hey guys, it's Jessica, and I am going to share with you today six, six um, activities to help you teach your older students about stuttering. Um, so I have just posted a video that starts with kind of the introductory activities and I gave you seven activities that are kind of like your baseline introductory, what is stuttering vocabulary, that kind of stuff. Be sure to check out that video, okay? Um, but today we are going to talk about six activities that you can use after you've done the introductory stuff. And before we get started, I just want to make sure that you know that this is actually a resource that is in my TPT store. If you want to um, go down to my store, down to the description, there will be a link to my store to this specific activity pack. It's got over 70 pages in it, full of activities to help you go from start to kind of monitoring um, of stuttering therapy. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Okay, so here is activity number one, the flashcard activity. In this activity, I have written the type of disfluency and the definition, and I've given a example and a visual cue representing that disfluency. So for block, it kind of looks like a block. I have a prolongation, I have one for interjection, and I tried to kind of pick a visual that would kind of maybe go with the feeling of having that type of disfluency. Um, repetition, so each of the types of disfluency has the word, the definition, example, and a visual picture. And then for the activity, what we do is we get the Play-Doh out, because who doesn't love Play-Doh? And we just kind of put the Play-Doh, like we kind of trace the Play-Doh in the image of the flashcard. So we would put like a big rectangle for the block, and it just kind of adds a nice tactile, you know, kind of fun approach. It makes it feel more fun than just doing drills. So activity number one is the flashcard activity. Now activity number two is one of my favorite activities. Um, I've not had a student who doesn't love this unless they're too old and too cool for it. So you might be aware of that. The activity number two is a movement activity. And with this activity, we again pull out our cards to review and we start thinking about a movement that could represent each disfluency. So for example, for prolongation, you know, you could totally use your hands if they're too cool for whole body movement. Do like prolongation. If you're doing a whole body movement, I like to do like prolongation. For interjection, I like to jump up and down. Or no, yeah, you could jump up and down. I think jump up and down is actually repetition. Repetition would be jump up and down, jump up and down. Or you could, you know, tap up and down or something like that. You and your students are gonna brainstorm basically a movement for each activity. Um, for a block, you could totally tense up and get tight. And then what you're gonna do is once they are really good at identifying the movement that goes with a different type of disfluency, you'll call it out. So you guys will all stand up and you'll get up and you'll get moving around. You'll be like, okay, show me block. And they'll freeze and then you'll say, Okay, show me repetition. I'll jump up and down. Okay, show me prolongation. And they'll do the little prolongation movement. And you'll do that activity for several times. Um, and I actually, in the resource to give you some better examples of what you could do for each type of disfluency. So you've got a moving, that's activity number two, the movement activity. Okay. Activity number three is having your students graph their disfluencies. Super simple and easy to do. Again, I like it because it ties into like math and graphing and skills that they're gonna be learning in the classroom. So I just make a little graph. This is the number of times it happened and this is the type of disfluency. So you might do like a conversation sample with your student or you know throughout the session, they need to sit and count what kind of disfluency they had, um, and then you can graph it at the end and see, oh man, I had a lot of blocks, or I have a lot of prolongations, or whatever the student's disfluency is. It gives them a really nice visual representation, 
And it's just knowledge for them of, okay, because remember when we move to the strategies, different strategies um, might be better or more helpful for a student who is having a certain type of disfluency. So again, that's just as giving them knowledge. And that was activity number three. Activity number four. Now, we are getting to stuttering intentionally um, because we need to be able to practice our fluency strategies. We also need to learn to stutter intentionally. Um, we also know that teaching students to stutter spontaneously can also help desensitize them to it. So that's part of the reason why we're wanting to do that. Now, I like to practice this in a hierarchy very similar to articulation. So the first thing that I teach my students as we're stuttering intentionally is I teach them about the, I always do it as a speech triangle with the bottom being phonemes, syllables, words, phrases, sentences, conversation at the top. So I teach them about that. And then we start stuttering intentionally at the small level of the phoneme. And what I do is I've just got cards with all of the phonemes on them and we just kind of practice as a drill, stuttering intentionally on each phoneme. So that is activity number four, stuttering intentionally on phonemes. Then to bump it up and make it a little bit harder, we start to stutter intentionally on words. So activity number five is stuttering intentionally at the word level. What I like to do is take the 100, I start with the 100 most common words in the English language. If you don't speak English natively or you're not teaching, you can do the most 100 common words in Spanish or German or Chinese, whatever it is. Um, and you start practicing intentionally on these words. The reason I picked this is A, these words obviously occur very often. Chances are your student is going to have a hard time with at least one, probably more than one. So it just gives them an opportunity to practice. Um, I do this as like, you know, you could do it as like a warm up activity or a cool down activity once they are pretty proficient at it. Um, so activity number five, stuttering at intentionally at the word level. All right, so activity number six, we have practicing fluency strategies. Okay, so you could teach this by just writing the strategies on um, a piece of paper in a square, kind of making like a card game out of it. So we have, sorry, we have the definitions and we have the strategies. So you can make like a memory game or a matching game or a bingo game. Um, if you wanted, you know, you could always make more copies if you wanted to make it a little longer. But I focus on six strategies, um, easy onset, phrasing and pausing, take a breath, stretchy speech, light contact, and slow rate. And in the resource that I'm linking in the description, there is a, um, definition of what all of the strategies are. So if you're a little bit rusty, which is totally fine, um, it will be included in that resource. So activity number six is teaching the, the strategies, what they are, um, defining them, and then you go back through that um, hierarchy that we talked about um, and use them in like, conversation, you start using the strategies at the word level, you start using the strategies at the sentence level, you start using the strategies at the conversation level, and you just build up just like you would with articulation therapy. And that's six activities to help you work with your older students who stutter. Okay, just to remind you one more time, there is a link in the description to my TPT store and Make sure you've checked out the first video, which is seven activities to teach your older students about stuttering. And that will also be linked in the description. And please make sure you like this video and subscribe so that you can be notified when I share some more speech therapy tips. Y'all have a great day.